The first item of business this afternoon is Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body Question Time. And question one, I call Adam Tompkins. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what steps it's taking to prevent illegal camps being set up on the Parliament's estate. Andy Whiteman. I uh, thank the member for his question. Members will note that the unlawful camp on the Parliament's land was removed last week uh, and fencing was erected across part of the Parliament's estate. The fencing is a temporary measure to allow remedial work to the landscaping to take place. The corporate body also intends to consider possible longer term measures. We are conscious that any such measures must be effective both in terms of cost and function. They'd also have to be sympathetic to the landscape and to maintain the freedom of access to the many who come to the public areas of the Parliament's estate to protest peacefully and lawfully or to simply enjoy the surroundings. Adam Tompkins. I thank the member for that answer. I want to make it plain first that I make absolutely no criticism of the parliamentary authorities over the wholly admirable way in which they have dealt with the uh, lawful removal of the illegal uh, indie camp from the Parliament's estate. But I am concerned, as many members will be, that illegal camps should not be set up on the Parliament's estate in the first place. Of course, the public has the right uh, to peaceful protest, but not where that protest interferes with the rights of others, uh, causes physical damage to the Parliament's grounds, or is incompatible with the nature of the Parliament's grounds, which the Court of Session have said are unsuitable uh, as a campsite. So let me ask um, what the parliamentary corporate body uh, can do, and indeed what it is doing, to ensure that such disruptive, aggressive and illegal behaviour is not allowed to recur on the Parliament's grounds. Andy Whiteman. Um, well, indeed, it's too soon to say uh, exactly what the corporate body might be doing in response to this. We are considering um, landscaping works uh, on, the, on the grounds. That's one obvious uh, possibility. But there is a limit to what one can do uh, lawfully to prevent incursions onto the parliamentary state without interfering with legitimate rights to access uh, our land. Um, in addition to proportionate physical barriers, of course, it's now been demonstrated that the there are legal remedies that can be used uh, successfully if further encampments are attempted. Um, should note, of course, that the form of protest uh, that was the subject of the recent court judgment is not one that is guaranteed under convention uh, rights. Uh, we understand that protesters plan to seek leave to appeal to the Supreme Court, um, but we are confident that the order we achieved from the courts and the precedent that's been set in this instance together with works that may be ongoing uh, to landscaping, uh, will help to, to, to limit the risks of this happening again, because I would stress that Parliament very much welcomes legitimate protests, legitimate demonstrations, and the freedom of the public to access the parliamentary estate. Question number two, Edward Mountain. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what assessment has been made of the drainage on the roof of the garden lobby? David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. An inspection of the roof was carried out in 2007 by our property service consultants, uh, Lee Boyd. The garden lobby roof consists of a stainless steel roof lights designed as leaves positioned close together, and this combined with the three-dimensional form creates a complex uh, roof arrangement. Their inspection confirmed that this design can lead to water pooling in certain areas after heavy or persistent rainfall. This bespoke roof has shallow falls and raised seams, which are part of the original architectural design. Our consultants were able to advise this does not affect the roof's waterproof structure. As a result, we clean this roof regularly to maintain its appearance and to check the drainage points are clear and free-flowing. Edward Mountain. As we've heard, water continually sits on the garden lobby roof. Despite the roof being regularly cleaned, algae growth continues within a couple of weeks of cleaning. As a qualified chartered surveyor, I'm concerned this obvious design defect, which should have been rectified when the roof was built, will result in the premature failure of the roof. Could I ask what is the cost of annual cost for cleaning the roof, which appears to be done on a three to four week basis, and, would it, and ask whether it, whether it would not be better to fix the problem now rather than continue to clean it? David Stewart. Mr. Officer, could I thank the member for uh, his question? Um, uh, clearly, he's very knowledgeable in these matters as a qualified uh, surveyor, um, and I will write to the member with the annual costs that the member has requested. Um, the consultants found in 2007 
uh, that pooling does not affect the integrity of the structure. So we've therefore chosen to manage this through our planned maintenance regime. Question number three, Alexander Stewart. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body whether it will consider installing additional boiling water dispensers in the building in light of health and safety concerns. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the, corporate the corporate body currently has no plans to install additional hot water boilers in the members' block. Uh, there are no mains water available other than at the north end of the corridors. The showers and the toilets at the other end are tank-fed water and therefore not of a quality suitable for tea points and, and plumbing mains water to the end of the corridor would uh, incur considerable and substantial costs. Tea points are provided at all levels of the MSP block and where possible doors are held open to allow unrestricted access along the corridors. Alexander Stewart. Can I ask what measures are in place regarding risk management assessments to deal with any drink spillages in the building? David Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. And can I thank the member for that, that question? And clearly, uh, any spillages should be reported to Facilities uh, Management Help Desk, who will promptly inform the cleaning team. Um, we have not received any reports of accidents over the last 12 months, and we strongly encourage uh, members, staff and visitors to report accidents through the health and safety reporting site. This, is, this will allow us to identify problems and take appropriate remedial action. Question number four, Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliament Corporate Body what it does with unsold food from eating facilities in the building. Gordon MacDonald. It's estimated that only 4% of food at Holyrood goes to waste. This is because staff work with the contractor to minimise waste, including the recent introduction of a waste monitoring system that helps staff to understand how much and where the food is being wasted so that they can take the appropriate measures. All food waste is collected by the waste disposal contractor and taken away for industrial composting. Stuart McMillan. Uh, thank uh, Gordon MacDonald for, for the answer. Certainly within the last few weeks I was made aware uh, of the situation of food waste uh, by staff members of an MSP after they had questioned catering staff as to where uh, unsold food actually goes to. And certainly I would like to ask the corporate body to consider uh, distributing unsold food to, uh, to any local organisation who could actually help or be in a position to help people who are homeless or others who are in need. Uh, and certainly when it comes to any of the unsold food, that, that food will actually be very much welcomed. Gordon MacDonald. I thank the member for that question and I share some of the, the concerns and uh, you know, uh, what we could do. However, any packaged food will be kept until the use-by date and will be classed as waste. Any unpackaged food that has been fully prepared and served is no longer temperature controlled and therefore becomes a risk for human consumption and has to be classed as waste. I'm aware this question was raised earlier this year at a previous corporate body question time, and I'm aware that officials keep this under regular review. That concludes corporate body question time. And we now move on to the next item of business. I'll give a few minutes for people to arrange themselves suitably. <laughs>